Good day everybody, welcome to part 2 of the building of an entire inventory system right from the beginning. If you did not see part 1, please make sure that you do by following the link that I will leave in the description. Thank you Xline Soft for this outstanding product. Please go and visit their website to obtain your copy if you have not done so already. There is also a new build available and I'm going to use the opportunity to demonstrate how to perform such an upgrade. Here I have opened up the inventory project we created in part 1. As already mentioned in previous tutorials, notifications about new builds are available at the left bottom corner of the application window. I click on the more info link and a web page open up explaining changes and fixes for this build. I follow the link provided and it will take me directly to the support page where I will have to sign on. Click on my purchases and then on the registration link next to my latest purchase. I'm now supplied with two links, one for the 32-bit setup and another for 64-bit. Although I only use 64-bit, I always download both. Copy the link into a new tab, supply the user and password and the download begins. Before you run the setup, make sure that PHP Runner is not open. No need to uninstall your current version. Double click on the file you just downloaded and follow the on-screen instructions. Accept the agreement, click through, supply additional info regarding your needs and install. The installation will take a few minutes and the new build is now applied. In part 1 we created the stock table from PHP My Admin. We still need a movement table and I'm going to create a table from PHP Runner. Click on create new table. The first line in the window acts as an example of how to add your fields. First, I'm going to name the table and call it stock movement. We are going to need six fields and I will start adding them. As I do not want a field called field1 in my table, I will rename it to movement underscore id. Also note that it is important not to have a space before or after your field name. It is better not to have any spaces or capital letters when it comes to naming field names. The underscore came in handy as a replacement to all spaces. The next field is called part number, so I will add it in the next line. A small little trick is to roll the mouse wheel up or down and the next space for the next field becomes available. I will now continue to add the remaining four fields, which will be movement date, movement type, movement comment and movement quantity. Next up is to declare the field type for each field by selecting the appropriate setting from the drop down menu next to each field. Movement ID, I'm going to make an integer. Part number, integer as well. Movement date, will be a date time. Movement type, I'm going to leave as varchar. Movement comment, will change into a medium text and movement quantity. I'm going to make an integer. Movement type is by default varchar50, but we only need one character as I will store i for stock in and o for stock out. So I will change it to 1. Next up is the not null setting for each field. This is very handy as the database will validate fields that are not allowed to be empty and we don't have to control or test it from PHP. Movement ID, since this will be the primary key, is not allowed to be null. The same applies for part number, the date, type 
and movement quantity. As already mentioned, movement ID will be the primary key, so I select the tick box. Finally, I need the movement ID to be auto increment, so I select the movement ID from the auto increment field drop down list. Click on Create Table. Now, this is a very powerful feature in PHP Runner as this table has been created in the online database. Now that we have both our tables, we will define the one-to-many relationship between them. And we do so by clicking and dragging part number from the stock table and drop it onto the part number field from the movement table. The table link property window will display next and generally the default state is going to be acceptable. The only change I will make is to untick the proceed to details link setting as in this case there will not be a lot of benefits looking at only the movement data. Click OK. Next at the page setting I will select the pages I would like PHP Runner to generate for each table. Starting at the stock table, we will start with a list, edit, add and delete pages. The movement table will have a list and add pages. To make it a bit more interesting, I select settings next to the list page and enable show in pop-up for the add page. Next up is the field settings. Here we select which fields to display for each table. I'm going to leave everything as is for the stock table, but for the movement table we will remove the movement ID from the list and search pages. At the security page I'm going to hard code a user admin with password admin. I will apply better security and permissions in future tutorials. Now we are at the famous page designer. Here we will make some various changes that will affect the general look and feel for the application. Starting with common pages, I removed the stock movement element and amend the stock description to stock maintenance. Moving over to the stock table, I'm going to leave the list page as is. But on the add page, I will have to make some changes. Most here is fine except for the stock field. Stock is going to be calculated from the actions within the movement table, hence no manual interventions will be needed. Double click on the stock field and edit as read only. Also remember to add a zero at the default value setting, as a not null table constraint exists for this field. Finally, we will go to the movement table. At the list page, I'm renaming each field to a more understandable caption. Part number is just fine, but the MVT abbreviation for the remaining fields will have to change. Click on the movement date field and change the label. Repeat for the remaining fields. Some changes will have to take place at the add page. Part number will have to be read only as this will be populated via the stock table relationship. The movement date will auto populate via the now function. Set it to read only and add the now function to the default value field. Movement type can only accept two values, I for stock in and O for stock out. Double click on type field and select lookup wizard. By default PHP Runner is asking for a database table to populate the lookup, but at this point we don't have such a table, so select list of values. Click on add and type I. 
type O, OK and close. We did define a not null constraint in the table, but selecting required field option will not harm. Movement, comment and quantity I leave as is. Next is the editor page. Here a lot can be achieved regarding HTML and custom CSS. But for this tutorial I will only select the style and make some changes in the menu builder. In the menu builder I am removing the movement link. Next up is the event page. Here we will have to do some calculations with regards to stock. When a movement type I is selected, we need to add the same amount to the existing stock count and the opposite when type O is selected. At the after a record added event from the stock movement add page, add the following code. Since the value has changed in the child table and the parent table has been updated accordingly, we will have to refresh the page for the value to take effect. A manual refresh from the user will work, but we can add some code that will do the refresh automatically. At the JavaScript onload event from the child tables list page, in this case the list page of the movement table, add the following code. And that's it. We now should have a basic working inventory system. Let's build the project and upload the files via the built-in FTP client of PHP Runner. You will recall that the FTP location was already created in part 1, so I'm just using the same location. Let's open the application and sign in. Link to the application also to be found in the description. The stock table is currently empty, so let's add something. Note the stock is currently zero as we cannot change it. Click save. Now back to the list page, let's add some movement. The type will be I as we load stock now. Supply a comment and quantity and click save. Note how the part stock has changed accordingly. Let's do a few more transactions. And it seems to be working as expected. Now that's it for this tutorial. Please feel free and go and add some products and movements. Also please comment with suggestions on how we can change or improve this version. A link to the code I used is also available in the description. Like always, thanks for watching. Till next time.